you have a couple kids, they have friends, your spouse wants a dog, chores need to be done. So when it comes to buying a new family transport machine, naturally you're thinking about a minivan. I couldn't resist that. Uh, this is what people who need to move people are buying these days. Three row crossovers. Kia's Telluride is new from the name up. More than a ski resort in Colorado now, Telluride is a wake up call to the competition. Yes, Kia already has a three row crossover, the Sorento, but it's a little bit on the small side if that third row is gonna get used on a regular basis. Telluride is eight inches longer. Besides, there's really not much of a price difference between the two. An eight passenger front drive Telluride begins at about $32,700. And yes, that's with shipping. This fully loaded top shelf all wheel drive SX model with a self leveling rear suspension tow package and prestige package that adds Napa leather, head up display, and a second row that gets heated and vented chairs spirals up to a lofty 47,300 bucks. Uh, wait, that's a lot of money, but very reasonable for what's packed into it. Price an Atlas, Enclave, Highlander, Pilot, or Traverse, and you'll see what I mean. The Kia is thousands of dollars less and in most cases better equipped. Telluride's rugged look gets a lot of compliments wherever it goes, and it's very useful. For example, it's easy to get the mid-row chairs out of the way. It is a bit of a step for small kids to get back here. This is an SUV after all. Now, if I adjusted the middle row for me to sit comfortably here, back here, I'm okay. The cushion is low, my knees are up high, so there's not much thigh support. And I wouldn't wanna be the adult sitting in the middle here. In a practical sense, this is more of a six passenger vehicle than a seven passenger vehicle. The belt for the middle position can be awkward if folding the seats often. There are cup holders. Most Tellurides get two of these in each row. And if you often carry a lot of people, take my advice, check out a minivan. They're much more practical in that regard. I'm just trying to help. Really. Telluride is built in Georgia, if that matters to you. The only engine is a 3.8 liter V6 that cranks out 291 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. And that's with standard grade gasoline. An eight speed automatic does the shifty work. All models are available as a front driver and all can add the $2,000 all wheel drive system that sends 80% of power to the front wheels in comfort and snow modes. Sport mode splits the power 65-35 front to back. Lock sends power evenly to all four tires. Telluride isn't rocket fast, but it's as quick as it needs to be. Besides, you need to set a good example for the kids. Zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds should be plenty, and face it, you're probably gonna be stuck in traffic anyway. If you're thinking about pressing Telluride into road trip duty on a regular basis, uh, you could do a lot worse. Moves down the highway very nicely, and it's fairly quiet. I put some 450 miles on this Kia and enjoyed it quite a bit. There was a lot of highway traveling. I saw an average of 23 miles per gallon. Not too shabby for a big boy with a squared off shape. The ride quality is on the firm side. The benefit to that is when you sling this into a corner, body movements are very nicely controlled. Uh, the downside is that it might be a little bit too firm for some people. Check it out on your test drive. Telluride never begs to be driven hard. It's not as much fun as Mazda's CX-9, but it's always composed and it feels trim from behind the wheel, like it's a size smaller than it is. Remember Honda Lane Watch when signaling right? The blind spot would show up in the monitor here. Well, this Kia has something similar. Uh, if I signal right here, it shows the blind spot, but also when I signal left, uh, there it is again. I actually find this setup less distracting to use. And it's hardly the only tech that's stuffed into this rig. Telluride comes standard with a suite of active electronic safety technology that Kia has dubbed DriveWise. It includes adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection. The top two trim levels get something called highway driving assist. Now, as you can see, I can keep my hands off the wheel for a remarkably long period of time. This system paces traffic ahead, really locks you into the lane. It doesn't ping pong around. It's very confident. 
And you can take gentle corners pretty confidently, but after about 10 or 15 seconds, it really wants your hands on the wheel, which is smart. The system can recognize speed limits on federal highways and adjust speed accordingly. Also, a camera tracks vehicle lane changes, and if it senses another vehicle, it breaks the opposite side's front wheel to help steer away from it. Overall, this is impressive. This being the top line SX, you would expect an attractive cabin. Kia delivers here. It's not real open poor wood, but it sets a nice Audi Q7-esque vibe in the cabin or Land Rover. If you've never experienced a heated wheel, it's nice. It's hard to photograph, but there's ambient lighting front and back. Let the kids choose the color. My biggest gripe is that buttons on this silver strip are hard to read in the daytime. A little bit more contrast here, Kia. But other than that, it's packed with features and tech. Everyone from my very petite wife to a six foot seven friend found a comfortable driving position in the heated and vented seats. And the Harman Kardon system is rich and punchy. There's an intercom of sorts called Driver's Talk. It uses the microphone up here to project my voice to the back speakers, to the kids that are misbehaving. Remember when we used to just shout? Stop that. The user interface is the standard Kia setup, which means it's laid out well and is easy to use without thumbing through the owner's manual. Those that want a console jog wheel won't like it. This is mostly touchscreen with a few hard buttons located below. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. There is no built-in rear entertainment option, but a couple iPads tuck away very nicely in the console, and there's a Wi-Fi hotspot if you want to pay the monthly charge. Storage is all over the place, not a problem. I like the roof, so you know the back panel is fixed. The middle row in crossovers like this get a lot of use, and there's much to like here. The kids will have tons of legroom, or they can learn to share with those in the third row, an important life lesson. Even the seat backs are well done in Telluride. I've not seen this location for power ports before. Pretty cool. Anything can be charged up back here. And between those heated and vented seats and the climate zone, there should be nothing to complain about in row number two. Nothing. At all. One of these days, I'm going to set up a GoPro when I take this much TP out. Might be good for a laugh. Stack this high, it gets kind of tippy and the vibration from the asphalt causes it to fall over. I mean, really, that's a lot of TP. The tailgate can be set to open automatically if you stand near it with the proximity key. I turn that off in the menu. Oftentimes, three-row rigs have precious little space when all the seats are in use, which is why vans are better. Telluride isn't half bad. A fairly decent-sized cooler will fit back here, and underneath this floor, there's a physical spare, not just an inflation kit. Dropping row number three is super easy, and you won't break a sweat lowering the mid-row. Pretty handy. They're not powered. When it comes to raising them, it has to be done manually. I don't think that's too much to ask. My special test is always done with seating for at least four people, unless it's a Miata, and Telluride does well taking on stuff. It's not the best in class. That would be Volkswagen Atlas at 20 packs of the two-ply, but 17? That's a solid score. Uh, that's enough TP to last a ski resort for a week, I'd imagine. And it needs a little help to close. That's not unusual with power tailgates. It's allowed. It's a standardized thing. Kia takes a different tack with Telluride's design. Sportage and Sorento have urbane lines that are swept and elegant. This one is chunky and rugged. There are some interesting elements happening all over. It won't be confused with any other crossover, even its sister, the Hyundai Palisade that rides on the same architecture. The masculine look gives the impression that it can conquer the great outdoors, and that's not far from the truth. At the Northwest Automotive Press Association's SUV of the Year contest called Mudfest, it took on the easy off-road course without an issue. And while this isn't the Rubicon Trail, it's doubtful many owners would even consider driving it on terrain this harsh. The course is more challenging than it looks on camera. Telluride won hands down in the mid to full sized segment and was the runner-up to Jeep Gladiator as the overall winner. The automotive market is so competitive these days, it's unusual to find a vehicle that stands apart from the competition. Telluride is a rare example. It's priced right, looks great, drives well, 
Coddles the family, is stuffed with tech and safety features, and even has competitive fuel economy. I still believe vans are better for moving people and cargo, but if you're looking to haul kids, dogs, and stuff in a three-row crossover, it's a smart move to put Telluride on the test drive list. So obviously I like the Telluride, and whenever I write up a positive piece like this, well, basically I second guess myself and go back to my notes and the video I shot to make sure that I'm not missing anything. And triple checking everything, yeah, it's that good. In addition to winning at Mudfest, it also took best of titles at two Texas SUV of the Year competitions. Just saying. To a person, everyone that got into this rig during the 10 days I had it pegged it for a much more expensive vehicle than it is. Now, keep in mind, Ford has a new Explorer in the wings with a rear drive chassis structure, and Toyota's new Highlander will drop at the end of 2019. I'm curious how Hyundai will tune the Palisade, which again rides on the same platform. There's a lot to choose from in this segment, and a lot is very good. Do your homework. Telluride might be a good value, but none of these are exactly cheap. Before I go, let's play a little bit of Kia SUV trivia. Anybody out there remember the Borrego? The Borrego, anybody? I think in other markets it was called the Mojave. Um, it was launched back in 2008 and kind of a uh, competitor to the Ford Explorer. It was a truck-based SUV. Um, launched just in time, in fact, here in the Pacific Northwest, uh, for $5 a gallon gasoline and the financial meltdown. So really, it was actually a pretty good vehicle, just a victim of timing. Uh, the Telluride, I see the timing as being pretty good timing. I think people are going to snap these things up. Uh, that's Driven. I'm Tom Volk. Thanks for playing trivia with me.